You're listening to the Kirk and Tillich Herald, a Q and Review recording service podcast, brought to you by our team of volunteers currently recording from their homes across Scotland. Whether you're listening via the BWBF online players, the telephone app, or our brand new Alexa skill, please phone us on 0141 772 3976 to feedback on what you want us to provide and improve upon. Please also join your family and friends in being our audio ambassadors and share our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram all at Q and Review. That's at symbol C-U-E-A-N-D-R-E-V-I-E-W. The Kirk and Tillican Bishop House Herald podcast, date Wednesday the 30th of November 2022, read to you by Alan, Corey and Ian. Cash troubles? Woke of War needs to raise money fast? A business which is an outlet in Kirk and Tillock has started a crowdfunding appeal to save them from going under. Woke of War is a social enterprise which exists to build a sustainable food system which is better for people and planet, but now has a serious cash flow problem. Over the last 11 years, they've grown from a tiny shawl and shop into an organisation that's at the forefront of laying down the foundations for the type of food system we need in the future. They've built a market for good food, helped farmers to convert to organic, nudged producers who've never considered organic to take the plunge, and created a blueprint for all all aspiring shops and farmers to follow. A spokesman said, We currently have four shops across central Scotland, four organic market gardens, and a central hub where we pack our veg boxes and deliver wholesale orders to other retailers across the country. On top of that, we have a kitchen supplying our cafes and shops, and run projects like our community plots at Bella Houston and the Good Food Fund which gets, mo- which gets good food to those most in need. Unfortunately, this is all now under critical threat as we face the most difficult period in our 11 year history. We really need your help. The charity has gone through a period of rapid growth and expansion. Opened new shops including Kirk and Tillich, took on and fitted out a warehouse from which they learned the wholesale business and veg box deliveries. Over that time, they gained widespread recognition winning Scottish and then UK Social Enterprise of the Year in 2021 and November 22 won the BBC Food and Farming Award for Best Shop and Market. Unfortunately for Melly in 2022, the cost of living crisis started brewing and this, combined with other factors, meant they have had a serious cash flow problem developing. An application to the Recovery and Resilience Loan Fund was refused. The new plan to do what it takes to survive without any immediate investment, while keeping as much as local of water intact as possible so damage can be minimised. To that end, the charity is now hoping to raise £50,000 to help plug the gaps via the crowdfunder page at www.crowdfunder.co.uk slash p slash slash save locavore. And that article was read by me, Ian McKenna. This Week in History November the 30th, 1900 Oscar Wilde, Irish-born playwright, died in Paris, aged 46. On this day last year, the Queen sent to the New Republic of Barbados her warmest good wishes for your happiness, peace and prosperity in the future as it celebrated its momentous day. December 1st, 1990, the two halves of the Channel Tunnel were joined under the sea. December 2nd, 1990, West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl won the first all-German election since 1933. December 3rd, 1984, more than 3,000 people died in a chemical factory spillage at Bhopal, Central India. December 4th, 1947, Tennessee Williams' play A Streetcar Named Desire was premiered on Broadway with Marlon Brando and Jessica Tandy in the leading roles. On this day last year, the boost to mental health and wellbeing caused by people spending time in the UK's woodlands saves the health service and employers around £185 million each year, no research said. December 5th, 1933, Prohibition ended in America after 14 years. On this day last year, the Duke of Cambridge revealed that Tina Turner hit brings back treasure memories of his mother singing it at the top of her voice with her sons as she drove them to school. The Choir Returns Following a hiatus of nearly three years, the long-awaited return of a popular concert series has reached fruition. One of Scotland's leading male voice choirs, 
Westerton MVC is delighted to be holding its popular Christmas concerts, The Spirit of Christmas, once more. Three performances will be held, Friday December the 16th and two on Saturday December the 17th, all at New Kilpatrick Church, Bears Den, under the baton of returning musical director and recently awarded one of BBC's Scotland's People, Brian Marshall. An enthusiastic Brian said, I'm delighted we're back in concert after three years after our last Christmas shows, with a chance to welcome and wow our audiences once again. The boys are working hard along the way with their superb accompanist Penny Watson and hope to put the spirit back into everyone's Christmas. Singing opportunities for men appear to be becoming more popular, evidenced by the choir welcoming an unprecedented 12 new members from across Kirkintilloch, Lindsay, Bishop Briggs and Bears Den since September alone, taking current rehearsal numbers to around 60 people. Brian notes, We have a job and a half integrating our new faces into the singing repertoire, but they have every confidence that we'll be ready with to blow our audience away with a memorable return for the choir to our regular concert routine. The choir's new charity this year is Drake Music, Scotland, DMS, Scotland's leading disability music organisation, whose aim is to transform people's lives through the power of music. Brian indicated that, surprisingly, this is the first music-related charity WMVC have supported, and he's excited at the prospects of not only supporting them financially, but also through mutual music sharing opportunities involving directly those whom Drake is supporting. Tickets priced £10 are available now at www.ticketsource.co.uk slash Western Mail of Squire or via Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Western Mail Choir or can be purchased directly from members of the choir. But be quick, they're selling fast. 16 more strikes. The Educational Institute of Scotland, EIS, the country's largest teaching union, has announced an additional 16 days of strike action in schools across Scotland as a dispute over a subinflationary 5% pay offer for teachers intensifies. Last week, in the first day of national pay strike action by teachers in four decades, EIS members were on the picket lines as the strike led to the closure of every state school in mainland Scotland. EIS General Secretary Andrea Bradley said, Scotland's teachers turned out in their thousands on picket lines at demos and campaign rallies across Scotland. Members have been angered by the actions of the Scottish Government and COSLA who, after three months of delay, came back earlier this week with the same 5% pay offer that their members had already rejected overwhelmingly. Name chosen for new school. The new £34.9 million additional support needs ASN school being built in Waterside, Kirkintilloch, has been named Woodland View School. The name for the new school, which is being built to replace Campsie View and Merkland schools, was picked up following a consultation involving families and staff of the two existing schools, Eastern Bartonshire Councillors and Waterside Community Council. Other names in the running were Antonine School, Collier's Bray School and Kelvin Valley School, but at the first time of asking there was no clear winner. The two names that polled highest were then voted on with the following result. Woodland View School, 142 votes. Kelvin Valley School, 89 votes. Members of the Council's Education Committee recently approved the name and Council Leader, Councillor Gordon Lowe, said, There is a big step forward and good news for the new school which is due for completion in May 2023. The Interim Parent Council did a great job running the consultations and bringing together the views of the two school communities. Head Teacher Ms Hunter said, Woodland View is a lovely name for our new school and it was fantastic to take some of our young people along to see the progress being made on the construction. Even from the outside, we can see how bright and airy our learning areas will be and how much space we will have. We are all very much looking forward to the day when the doors are open to pupils next year. It's very exciting. Read by Alan Todd. No car parking charges locally. Charges will once again be suspended in the Council's fee levying car parks on the four Saturdays leading up to Christmas. If you're driving to Bears Den, Bishop Briggs, Kirkintilloch or Mungai for festive shopping to enjoy a bite to eat, then don't pay, for, don't pay to park your sleigh. 
Look out for details of any community events in the run-up to Christmas as lights began to twinkle above town and village centres. Parking charges will be suspended in council car parks in Bears Den, Bishop Briggs, Kirkintog and Mulgai on Saturdays the 3rd, 10th, 17th and 24th of December. Councillor Gordon Lowe, council leader, said, We will once again be suspending charges in our town centre car parks on the four Saturdays leading up to Christmas. If you're out and about, then please support local shops, hospitality venues and service providers, if you can. To ensure public safety, the Council's community and parking wardens will still be enforcing parking regulations and restrictions for any vehicles parked inappropriately on street and off street, including blue badge misuse, on the Saturdays when charges are suspended. The Council is a supporter of the Scotland Loves Local campaign, which includes the Eastern Bartonshire gift card, led by Scotland's Towns Partnership. For more information on the card, visit www.scotlandgiftslocal.com slash product slash east hyphen the Bartonshire hyphen gift hyphen card. The Scotland Loves Local Eastern Bartonshire gift card is a good way to support local businesses. MSPs demand. Local MSP Rona Mackay has demanded the Westminster respects Scottish democracy after the Supreme Court ruled on Wednesday that Scottish Parliament does not have the power to hold an independence referendum. The SNP MSP for Strathkelvin and Bears Den added that the Supreme Court ruling must be respected but it demonstrates that Scotland is not part of a voluntary union. Ms Mackay said, Westminster must respect the democratic mandate delivered by the people of Scotland in the last year's Scottish elections. A majority of MSPs were elected on holding the independence referendum and that must be upheld. The Supreme Court ruling is one that must be respected but what it highlights is that Scotland is not part of a voluntary union. How SDS can help S2S3 Skills Development Scotland is hosting a webinar for parents and carers to find out more about how SDS can help their young pe- person make their, their S2 slash 3 option choices at school. Scotland's Carers Career Service has organised a virtual session on December the 7th at 6.30pm which will give parents and carers information about accessing a wide range of support to begin these important conversations. Careers advisors Erin Bartley and Gordon Armstrong will be providing expert advice. Gordon said, Thinking about what options to choose at school can be daunting. This is an excellent opportunity to find out what's on offer. Festive Fun Programme a feast of festive attractions will take place at Kilmer Denny House, including a Christmas fair and scrumptious lunches. The a listed building in Bears Den will be the spectacular venue for a selection box of events. Last Saturday saw a packed house enjoying a festive wreath-making workshop run and hosted by local florist, Rose and Time. Participants were able to make their own festive door garland while enjoying a glass of fizz and festive treats. Keep an eye open for any further dates that may become available for this popular event. Sunday, December the 4th, Christmas Fair, 11am to 3pm, free entry. You'll not want to miss the Kilmer Dunny Christmas Fair, with a variety of stallholders offering unique gift ideas, including art, candles, jewellery and cards. Enjoy a leisurely shopping spree, then relax in the theatre with a festive film and cosy tea slash coffees and cake. Friday, December the 16th, Drag Queen Xmas Party, 7pm to midnight. It's party time. Join the dashing drag queens for an occasion to remember, including a glass of fizz on arrival, a festive three-course feast, a round of bingo, and then dancing to the sounds of the Kilmardini DJ. Don't let kids suffer. Local MSP Rona Mackay is urging local residents to support a popular social enter- enterprise Christmas toy appeal to spread a little joy and help ensure no child across Eastern Bartonshire goes without a gift this year. More than 300 children have been referred this festive season to Babes in the Wood, based at Bishop Briggs, by NHS health visitors, social workers, women's aid and other local family support agencies from across the Eastern Bartonshire area. Strathkelvin and Bearsden SNP MSP Rona Mackay said, Without the help of Babes in the Wood, these children would not receive any gifts at all this Christmas. It would encourage everyone, I would encourage everyone who is in a position to donate to consider doing so, 
ensuring children in our community can have the Christmas they really deserve. Any new unwrapped gift can be handed in to Babes in the Wood at Wellington Road. Babes in the Wood is now entering its eighth year of operation and was set up to help reduce the effects of poverty on children across East Dumbartonshire from birth to 15 years. Christmas is a time for children and despite the financial crisis we are in the middle of, children should not be waking up on Christmas morning to nothing. The not-for-profit enterprise provides free clothes, toys and baby equipment to families in need. They also run a low-cost shop open to the public. Its director, Heather Royan, said, In view of the cost of living crisis, we are responding to an unprecedented number of requests as so many local families struggle to meet the cost of Christmas. As always, the good people of Eastern Bartonshire continue to show their support by bringing their donations of new, unwrapped toys to us for inclusion in our Christmas packs. As our local MP, Rona, has always been so supportive of our work, and we are exceptionally grateful to have her help again this year to ensure that no child in Eastern Bartonshire wakes on Christmas morning without gifts under their tree. Further information is available at the organisation's website at https colon forward slash forward slash babesinthewood dot org forward slash that's https colon forward slash forward slash babesinthewood dot org forward slash Teachers walk out over pay the Educational Institute of Scotland, EIS, has today condemned the Scottish Government and COSLA for presenting a revised pay offer to teachers that offers no tangible improvement on their previously rejected offers. Following three months of delay and the promise of an improved offer to teachers, the offer that was presented last week provides no additional money, audit money and is, for many teachers, a far worse offer than, offer than those previously rejected by teacher unions. A special meeting of the EIA Salaries Committee has unanimously rejected the offer. As a result of this, strike action began on Thursday. Commenting, EIS General Secretary Andrea Bradley said, This offer is nothing less than an abject, abject insult to Scotland's hard-working teaching professionals. Teachers overwhelmingly rejected a 5% 5 offer more than three months ago and now, after months of prevarication, Cosla and the Scottish Government came back with an offer that is worth the same 5% to the vast majority of teachers. Jazz Queen Scotland On Tour, the exciting initiative to support the recovery of Scotland's live music industry, returns to Lindsay this winter when Ali Affleck performs a special Christmas concert at St Cyprian's Church on Saturday 17th of December. Ali Affleck is an award-winning jazz singer and early jazz historian. She has earned a solid reputation as the quintessential go-to vocalist for authentic trad jazz and prohibition era blues. Ali works internationally, is regularly commissioned by the BBC and Jazz Scotland and has been invited to perform at festivals and swing dance events worldwide. Ali said, I'm really looking forward to performing at St Cyprian's. It's exciting to bring old time jazz to venues where the genre might not usually be showcased. Tickets at www scotlandontour.com That's www.scotlandontour.com MSP visits the service Bishopbridge Community Church was the venue for the launch of this year's Prisoners Week Scotland aimed at highlighting concerns and sharing hope in prisons and communities across the country. Strathkelvin and Bearsden MSP Rona Mackay who is a member of the Scottish Parliament's Criminal Justice Committee attended the launch on Sunday November the 20th and praised the many organisations at the event who support people in prison and their families. She is pictured with Tom Fox, trustee of Prisoners Week Scotland, and Reverend James Faddis, church leader at Bishop Best Community Church. Mr Faddis is also founder of Glesca Roasters, based in Bishop Briggs, an employability project using coffee roasting to support people with experience of the criminal justice system. Ms Mackay said, As a member of the Criminal Justice Committee, I was delighted to attend the launch of this year's Prisoners Week Scotland at Bishop Best Community Church. Prisoners Week is an initiative of churches in Scotland with the Scottish Prison Service. It aims to stimulate discussion, highlight concerns and share hope in prisons and communities across the country. It was a privilege to meet with Tom Fox, trustee of Prisoners Week Scotland, and Reverend James Faddies, church leader at Bishop Best Community Church. 
as well as representatives of the many organisations carrying out excellent work in supporting people in prison and their families, giving them the best chance of stability and a stronger future. The valuable work of not-for-profit organisation Connect the Community offers support to prisoners as they prepare for release. One of their team, Mary Phillipson, said, The event was a great opportunity to meet with so many organisations, all working in the same field. We really appreciate that Rosa took the time to thank us for her work, especially during the pandemic. She seemed particularly interested that her female resettlement worker has seen a large increase in referrals as increasing numbers of families hear about her services. A month of rail strikes? Rail Union, RMT, will put on a series of 48 hour strikes in December and January after industry bosses failed to offer any new deals to reach a settlement. Over 40,000 members will take strike action on the 13th, 14th, 16th and 17th December and again on January the 3rd, 4th, 6th and 7th. There will also be an overtime ban from 18th of December until January the 2nd, essentially meaning RMT will be taking industrial action for four weeks. The RMT said, Despite every effort made by our negotiators, it is clear that the government is directly interfering with their attempts to reach a settlement. The union suspended previous strike action to allow the negotiations to resolve the dispute. Yet, Network Rail have failed to make any improved offer on jobs, pay and conditions for members during the last two weeks of talks. At the same time, Rail Delivery Group, representing the train operating companies, have also failed to make a meaningful offer on paying conditions. Emergency Food Supplies Food Bank Friends The Trussell Trust supports a nationwide network of food and banks and together we provide emergency food and support to people experiencing poverty and campaign for change to end the need for emergency food provision in the UK. There are more than 1,300 food bank centres in our network, about two-thirds of the food banks in the UK. We support these food banks to provide a minimum of three days of emergency food to people who are in crisis, as well as providing support to help people resolve the challenges they are facing. The cost of living crisis is impacting all of us, but for people on the lowest incomes, it's simply impossible. Faced with the perfect storm of rising energy prices, inflation and a potential recession that will push millions of people deeper into poverty, the cost of living crisis is driving a tsunami of need to food banks. We're already experiencing increasingly high levels of need for food banks. In the last couple of months, food banks have provided 46% more emergency food parcels than the same period last year and are distributing a parcel to someone every 13 seconds. Over the coming months, we're expecting to provide more parcels than any winter before. We anticipate that between October and March, we will provide more than 1.3 million emergency food parcels and half a million of those will be for children. How to access food banks? If you find yourself needing to visit a food bank, getting support is easier than you think. How do you get support from a food bank? To get support from the food bank, you will need to be referred to the food bank with a food voucher. How do you get referred to a food bank? Every food bank works with different frontline professionals like doctors, health visitors, social workers and citizens advice. If you speak to one of these professionals, they will be able to refer you to a food bank and give you a food bank voucher if they think you need emergency food. Or you can call a food bank and ask how they can help you. What happens next? The food bank and referral agency will use this voucher to gather some basic information about you. This will help them understand why you need support and offer practical guidance and the right emergency food. How do you use your voucher? Once you have been given a voucher, you swap it for a minimum of three days emergency food at your nearest food bank centre. You can find this here, trusseltrust.org slash find hyphen a hyphen food bank. How do food banks work? Every food bank in the Trussell Trust network works with a range of local organisations like housing associations or local citizens advice and they can refer people for emergency support. These organisations will sometimes already be working with someone to support the situation they're facing and can provide them with a food bank voucher if needed. If you're not already in contact with an organisation that refers to a food bank, we would encourage you to call or drop into your local food bank to talk about how your access support in your area. 
when you arrive at a food bank, a volunteer will greet you and sit down with you and have a chat over a cup of tea about your situation. Volunteers are trained to direct people to other local agencies or charities that can help resolve the underlying reason for not having enough money for food. More and more food banks are partnering with ad- advice agencies so, so that additional support can be found at the point of crisis in the food bank. Who needs food banks? We know a people with a disability or health condition, families with children and single parents are all more likely to need a food bank. For example, we know that in recent years more than 6 in 10 of our working age people coming to our food banks doors were disabled. That's more than three times the rate of the general working age population. These sorts of people are surviving on extremely low income. The main reason people had such low income was due to social security payments failing to cover the cost of living. Half of people at food banks either have a disability or health condition or live with someone that does and a third of people have a mental health condition or live with someone that does. Be a food bank friend and donate to the Trussell Trust www.trusseltrust.org slash national world slash winter appeal. Who are we? What do we do? The Trussell Trust supports a nationwide network of food banks which provide emergency food and support to people experiencing poverty and campaign for change to end the need for emergency food provision in the UK. There are more than 1,300 food bank centres in our network, about two thirds of the food banks in the UK. We support these food banks to provide a minimum of three days of emergency food to people who are in crisis, as well as providing support to help people resolve the challenges they're facing. The cost of living crisis is impacting all of us, but for people on the lowest incomes, it's simply impossible. Faced with the perfect storm of rising energy prices, inflation and potential recession that will push millions of people deeper into poverty, the cost of living crisis is driving a tsunami of need to food banks. We're already experiencing increasingly high levels of need for food banks. In the last couple of months, food banks have provided 46% more emergency food parcels than at the same period last year and are distributing a parcel to someone every 13 seconds. Over the coming months, we are expecting to provide more parcels than any winter before. We anticipate that between October and March we will give more than 1.3 million emergency food parcels, half a million for children. Gardeners are asked to help curb spread. Keen gardeners and horticulturists in eastern Bartonshire are being urged to help curb the spread of invasive plants as part of their autumn maintenance plans. In line with the maintenance week, the Property Care Association has put together some tips to help contain a range of non-native weeds and prevent their potentially damaging spread. Maintenance Week is a campaign run by SPAB, the Society for the Prevention of Ancient Protection of Ancient Buildings. In support of the initiative, experts at the PCA are drawing attention to the significant ecological, environmental and economic burden of invasive non-native weeds and asking people to play a part in controlling them. Dr Peter Fitzsimmons said, Invasive non-native plants come in many different forms and sizes. Plants including Japanese rose and the Montbretia are a common sight in gardens across the country, but they are among a number of non-native species, including Japanese knotweed, that escape from gardens up and down the UK. Most started at life as garden ornaments, garden ornamentals, but have taken off to some degree or other in the wild and are now covered by Schedule 9 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. This requires them to be managed and controlled to minimise their potential negative impacts on natural ecosystems. Guidance from the PCA includes annual plants with seeds dispersed by wind, e.g. Himalayan balsam. Management of Himalayan balsam should be done by trimming or pruning, which will ensure the plant is unable to produce the flower and seed pods. Perennial, woody shrubs, plants that produce seeds attractive to birds, etc., e.g. Cotoneaster, Japanese rose, keep in check by pruning and thinning, which will reduce the amount of seeds and fruits that can be dispersed. Perennial plants that spread by underground rhizomes, stolons or bulbs, lift and thin, taking care to serve the soil to remove excess bulbils, etc. Dr Fitzsimmons added, Through government legislation and the media, we have all become aware of the potential harm non-native invasive plants can cause to buildings, the environment and even to human health. Gregor wins award. 
a lad from Lindsay has won the top prize at the Drax Annual Apprentice Awards and in recognition of their achievements over the past year at Dildowie Fuel Plant. Gregor Fraser, aged 23, from Lindsay, was awarded the Craft Apprenticeship of the Year, Year 3, for being proactive and take, taking lead in a number of projects. Gregor said, I'm really happy about winning an award. It feels great to be recognised for my work this year. It's also been good to meet people from other sites and get to know them. The best bit about doing an apprenticeship is how much you can learn from the engineers that work there. I'm looking forward to completing my apprenticeship and hopefully getting a permanent job on site. The 55 apprentices from across the group gathered at the Drax Sports and Social Club near to Drax Power Station in North Yorkshire for the celebration. Family Announcements Deaths Frost Michael Creasy Brackets Mike Died peacefully in the tender care of Springville Care Home at Lennox Town on Thursday, November 17th, 2022, aged 94. Mike was a much-loved husband of the late Cynthia and will be sadly missed by all his family and friends. Funeral is at West Chapel, Daldowie Crematorium on Friday, December 2nd at 10.45am. Family flowers only, please. Black attire is optional. There will be a retiral collection for Springvale Residents Fund. O'Neill Anne. Peacefully after a short illness at home on Monday, November 21st, 2022. Anne, beloved wife of Michael, loving mum to Michael and the late Cara, and Lisa Ann, devoted gran to Jamie, Xander, Ethan and Kellen, and a much-loved sister to Agnes, Charles and Alan. Fortified by the rites of the Holy Catholic Church, RIP. Reception and vigil to take place on Wednesday, November 30th, 2022, at St. Flallon's RC Church in Kirkintock at 6pm. Funeral Mass on Thursday, December 1st, 2022 at 10am and thereafter to Old Isle Cemetery. Family flowers only, please. There will be a retiral collection in favour of Mary Curie. In Memoriam Furie, John In loving memory of our dear father, John, who died November 30th, 1948. Always remembered. Thomas, Isabel, and family. Award winner is applauded by MSP. A popular Kirkintel Garden Centre has been congratulated by local MSP Bruno Mackay after winning a global award for the quality of food at its restaurant. Strathkelvin and Bearsden MSP Rona Mackay presented Calder's Garden Centre at Kilsyth Road with a special certificate from the Scottish Parliament after the family firm took a Global Restaurant Guru Recommendation Award for 2022 for the delicious homemade meals on offer at its butter churn coffee shop. Restaurant Guru is a worldwide online guide to good food and bases its awards solely in customer reviews. Ms Mackay put forward a promotion at the, at the Scottish Parliament to mark the family firm's success. Presenting the free certificate to garden centre owner Colin Barry and his coffee shop team, Ms Mackay said, this award demonstrates how highly the Butterchung Coffee Shop at Calder's is rated by visitors in the local constituency and further afield. Colin and his team must be congratulated on winning this award. Calder's is well known for its professional, professionalism and welcome. As well as serving delicious meals, the centre boasts a team of highly trained horticulturalists. I wish Calder's and their award winning Butterchung Coffee Shop all the best for the future. I am sure they will continue to go from strength to strength. The motion read that Parliament congratulates Calder's Garden Centre, Kirk and Tillock, on winning a Global Restaurant Guru Recommendation Award 2022. Understand that Restaurant Guru, a worldwide online guide to good food, bases this award solely in custom reviews. Consider that this demonstrates how highly the local establishment's Butterchurn Coffee Shop, where visitors can relax and enjoy a freshly cooked meal, is rated by visitors in the local area and further afield. Praises the team at Calder's at Goosyth Road for their professionalism and welcome at the garden centre, nestled in the foot of the Campsie Hills, with spectacular, 
reviews, acknowledges that, as well as serving delicious meals at the coffee shop, the centre boasts a team of highly trained horticulturists, a stunning gift shop packed with full of ideas, and an outside the area stocked with hand chosen plants, pots, compost, and much more. Let's talk. This week's Kirk and Tilkin Bishop Briggs Herald letters page as of Wednesday the 30th of November 2022. The NHS has always been a two-tier system. Sir, I had a wry smile at the BMA being concerned at the possibility of a two-tier NHS with the more affluent having to pay for treatment. I recall that when the NHS was being set up, the BMA was passionately insistent that doctors should be able to have private clients as well as working for the NHS. Eventually that is what they got, with Minister of Health Aaron and Bevan saying, I stuffed their mouth with gold. The system which emerged, as I understood it, was that a consultant would have access to a certain number of beds in the NHS hospital while he worked. Someone willing and able to pay for to avoid the long wait for treatment could then be referred by his, lo- by his GP to an appropriate consultant who would provide the necessary treatment using NHS facilities, with the fee paid by the patient going entirely to the consultant. Nowadays, there are more private hospitals, but my medical practitioners, I believe, continue to work part-time in both systems. From the inception of the NHS, dentists were overwhelmed and costs soared so soon, so very soon, fees for dental treatment were introduced, leading to Bevan resigning from the government for a time, while in the recent past, some dental practices have refused to take any NHS patients at all. Gradually, other service, ha- other service have to be paid for. Free sight tests, for example, have been restricted to a few categories, while only commercial chiropathy is generally available. Provision of appliances also presents a mixed picture. Spectacles, for instance, have to be paid for, but not hearing aids. In short, from my worm's eye viewpoint, the NHS, from its inception, has not been able to meet all the health needs free at the point of delivery. I would suggest that discussing where we we are now and where we should seek and are able to go, rather than just reiterating principles that we cannot implement, might be no bad thing. Yours, etc. S. Beck, Address Supplied. Democracy, SNP style. Sir, Nicholas Sturgeon is keen to portray the continuing standoff over a second independence referendum as being about a denial of democracy. In this, she implies a special definition of democracy, namely one where she and the SNP always get their way. The SNP leadership and their supporters are concerned about being ignored, yet do not hesitate to act as if more than half of the Scots who want to remain in the UK do not count. The First Minister priorities start saying grievance, and indeed appears to imagine this rather than the good government as her best route to securing more support for breaking up the UK. She cannot hide her irritation at suggestions that she and her government would do better if they focused more energy on their existing powers and the public services we all critically depend upon, and which have languished during the long years of SNP rule. Perhaps if she demonstrated more willingness to take responsibility for the Scottish Government's shortcomings, and suggested scope for genuine compromise in the timing and terms of co- and conditions of a future referendum, she might find both the Scottish public and the UK Government a bit more amenable to giving due consideration to that which she believes transcends all else. Keith Howell by email. All haggis and tartan. Sir, I am totally fed up with this never-ending focus on a referendum. Let us first understand what the detailed plan for an independence of Scotland would be, and the SNP has been refusing to tell us that for the past eight years. At first it was trumpeted that Scotland's oil would make us all rich. Now the development of fossil fuel is is a banned subject. Just one ever-changing just one example of how an ever-changing world impacts political and economic planning. In any democracy, the people being asked to vote should fully understand what they are voting for. In our case, the SNP continues with its haggis and tartan emotional dreams. This should not be tolerated in any democracy worthy of the name. The SNP continues to assert that Scotland is oppressed by its English neighbours. In what way are we oppressed? Would we achieve far more of Scotland if Scot- Sturgeon, Blackford and Brown and Co could properly and positively relate to the UK government instead of the sniping and insulting behaviour that we have been seeing for the last four to five years? Yours, etc. Derek Farmer. Address supplied. More news starts at the council. 
16 new apprentices have been employed as part of Eastern Bartonshire Council's popular award-winning apprenticeship programme. Eastern Bartonshire has recruited more than apprentices in the following departments Street Scene Environmental, Roads, Youth Work, Early Years, Building Standards, Operational Procurement and Supply Chain, Digital Communications and two graduate apprentices studying for a Masters of Accountancy. These apprentices come from all over Eastern Bartonshire. The programme has now been running for 10 years and has given more than 100 young people the opportunity to learn and gain work experience. The new apprentices joined the council in, in August and were welcomed by council leader Gordon Lowe and chief executive Jerry Connors. Councillor Lowe said, I am happy to congratulate all of our new apprentices who have joined the programme. I am confident they will gain excellent knowledge and experience over the next two years. The scheme offers training, work experience and college-based learning. It is a modern route into a work environment and has been very successful. 17-year-old Luke Stevenson from Kirk and Tillock has started his graduate apprenticeship, Masters of Accountancy. He said, I was first attracted to this role as I felt I had the qualities to be the best candidate. I thought an apprenticeship would be more beneficial to learning the role of an accountant than just going to university. Destiny Tate, 17, from Tweaker, is embarking on an early years modern apprenticeship. She said, I was attracted to this role as I have always been interested in working with the young children since the start of secondary school. 18 year old Katie joins the council as digital communications modern apprentice. She said, This apprenticeship appealed to me as it allowed me to both work and learn. With all the changes in the digital communications, there are lots of opportunities to gain more qualifications and experiences. Campsey Festival Association Winterfest Residents in Eastern Bartonshire are in for a real treat this December as a selection of musical events and craft fairs are being held. Campsey Festivals Association CFA, is offering a great free family to Winterfest over December the 10th and 11th in Milton of Campsey Village Hall. Over the whole weekend, local children's artwork will be on display. If you have a child and want to exhibit a piece of work, call 01360 310 996. On the afternoon of Saturday the 10th, you can dance from 2 to 5pm in the family Cayley with the 8-piece Campsey Cayley Band and be prepared to swing your partner, tap your toes and have a fantastic afternoon. Then at 7.30pm on that same Saturday, the brilliant 10-piece Kirk and Tiller Kelvin Brass will give a performance including some great Christmas music for all to enjoy. On Sunday 11th from 10.30am, Claire Miller holds a story creating workshop to stimulate both children and adults. To book a place, call 0754 6670 190. At 2.15pm on Sunday the 11th, St Vincent Baroque players perform in a great Christmas programme with Frank McCamley singing and directing an audience percussion band. To finish, there's a sing-along with carols for all. Children are invited to take up part in, in percussion on Mozart's Toy Symphony and Sleigh Ride. Throughout, fair trade refreshments are offered. For general information, see www.campseyfest.org.uk. CFA wishes to express their gratitude for the free provision in the hall for this community-based event and for the essential financial support from the Flight Path Fund and the Co-op Community Fund. MP speaks out in Parliament. Most people are unaware of the symptoms of pancreatic cancer or the risk factors that can lead to the disease. This is the warning of Eastern Bartonshire MP Amy Callaghan, who has thrown her support behind Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month following a speech in Westminster. During her speech, Ms Callaghan highlighted the cases of two constituents who lost their lives to pancreatic cancer, one of the world's deadliest diseases. She also heaped praise on local women, Leslie Irvin, who has worked tirelessly to raise awareness after losing her mother to the disease in 2020. Around 800 people in Scotland are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer every year, which is a five-year survival rate of only 3.8%. With no standard early detection test, Ms Callaghan said that it was important for people to recognise the common signs and symptoms, especially for people with a family history of the disease. Five-year survival rates increased significantly 
for those diagnosed in time for surgery. To promote Pancreatic Awareness Month, throughout November, some public and private buildings have lit up purple, while others are displaying awareness posters. Commenting, Amy Callahan MP said, Pancreatic cancer is a terrible disease that is sadly often caught far too late for any effective treatment. People turning up to A&E is still the most common route to diagnosis, since there is no simple test and awareness of the symptoms is so low. That is why I spoke about the need to raise awareness in Westminster, and I want to thank my constituents for letting me share the stories of their loved ones. Tutankhamun on Royal Mail Stamps Royal Mail is marking 100 years since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb by British archaeologist Howard Carter with a new set of 12 special stamps. The main set of eight stamps include a selection of some of the most significant and well-preserved items and feature Head of the King The head of the king emerging from a lotus flower represents part of the ancient Egyptian creation myth when the infant sun god Ra appears from a lotus flower floating on the primordial waters. Inlaid fan Fans provided cool air and shade. Eight were found in the tomb, all beautifully decorated and originally fitted with ostrich feathers long since perished. Gold mask. The mask of Tutankhamun is now the most iconic object from the tomb, revealed in October 1925 when the innermost coffin's lid was opened. Covering the head, neck and upper chest of the king's wrapped body, the mask's face is an idealised portrait of the young Tutankhamun. Falcon pendant. The falcon pendant, or pectoral, portrays the sun god Ray Harkity, a merged form of the royal god Horus and the sun god Ray. Lion Couch. When Carter peered into the tomb's antechamber, the first objects he glimpsed were the gilded couches in strange forms, lion-headed, hather-headed and beast infernal. Throne. The gold throne was referred to as perhaps the most important item among the entire contents of the tomb. The throne is made from gilded wood with gold sheets applied to the seat and backrest and is lavishly carved and decorated. Boat model. This unique boat model is made from calcite, Egyptian alabaster, and decorated with gold, ivory, fence, ceramic-like material, and coloured pigments. Guardian statue. This imposing life-size statue of Tutankhamun made of black painted wood with gilded details shows the king wearing the striped Nemes headdress with the Uraeus serpent at the front, the symbol of royal authority. The artefacts were photographed by renowned professional photographer of art and architecture, Araldo de Luca. Wellbeing Economy Toolkit for Councils Improvements to health, tackling child poverty and reaching climate goals are at the heart of a toolkit to support local economies to be fairer, greener, healthier and more resilient. The Wellbeing Economy Toolkit, supporting place-based economic strategy and political development, enables local authorities to identify and measure local wellbeing metrics, including health, child poverty, levels of greenhouse gas emissions and fair work, and prioritise investments and policies to improve them. This will include the creation of more high-quality sustainable jo- local jobs by using more local and regional procurement contracts, improved transport links to help people access services and work, better access to the natural environment which leads to better mental and physical health. The Constitution Secretary announced the toolkit at the Wealth of the Nations 2.0 conference at the University of Glasgow. He was joined by representatives from fellow wellbeing economic governments WEG Go of Finland and Wales to take questions from young people five years on from the first conversations to establish the network. Constitution Secretary Angus Robertson said, The need for an, a new economic model has never been clearer and that's why I think the wellbeing economy approach is gaining so much interest both here and around the world. Creating a wellbeing economy remains a defining mission for the Scottish Government and it is my belief that Scotland could use the powers of independence to achieve that aim more fully. SSPCA appeals for pet aid donations. The Scottish SPCA is appealing to animal lovers to donate food for animals during their pet aid programme. Pet aid is a charity's initiative to support people who are struggling with the cost of caring for an animal during the cost of living crisis. From December, 
Petit will be supporting 33 food banks in 12 local authorities, with a further 16 food banks looking to join the initiative. Calls to the SSPCA's animal helpline from people looking to give up a pet have more than trebled in 2022. Petted coordinator Carrie Ginelli said, Through Petted, we provide essential food supplies for animals through a network of food banks across most of Scotland. Keeping pets and people together helps improve both human and animal welfare. Many people who call our helpline don't want to give up their animal, but feel they have no choice. Through Petted, we can offer those people vital support and keep people and their pets together. We'd be so grateful for any donations that people can spare, and we know that people and pets using our Petted programme will to be too. A full list of food banks where Petted is available, and information on what food can be donated, can be found on the Scottish SPCA website at www.scottishspca.org slash pet hyphen aid. Anyone struggling to care for their pet can call the SPCA's Animal Helpline in strict confidence on 0300 That's 03000 For help and advice, donations can be dropped into any of the SSPCA's Animal Rescue and Rehoming Centres daily between 1pm and 4pm. These should be clearly marked as for donation to pet aid. Waterworks now underway. A significant investment project is underway at Scottish Waters, Craig Maddy and Mungduck Reservoirs in Mulgai. Residents who use the area for exercise and dog walking have been told that multiple projects have been carried out at the site over the next year or so will help improve service to customers across the Greater Glasgow area and bring noticeable aesthetic improvements to the site. The works being delivered by the Scottish Waters delivery partner George Leslie Limited involve a long list of upgrades including improved footpaths around the reservoirs, provision of a defibrillator, the introduction of wildlife themed mini trail, improved signage and general site maintenance and upgrades to help enhance visitor experience and safeguard water supplies. And that's not all. A shiny new Scottish water top up tap is due to be installed inside at the end of November just near to the biodiversity garden that's currently been created in the old coronation site. Speaking about this major investment project, Georgina Reid, Corporate Affairs Manager in the West, said, It's well known that Craig Maddy and Mudduck Reservoirs have a huge historical, recreational and environmental significance, and we're fully committed to maintaining and improving this much-loved site. With so much happening and the fact that Milgayan Reservoirs attracts hundreds of thousands of visitors each year, we're determined to minimise any impact on people's enjoyment of the site while our works are underway. The works will be carried out respectfully and we'll do all we can to keep any disruption to a minimum. Local group Friends of Mongai Reservoir have played a key role in helping develop the plans for the gar- garden and have been working closely with Scottish Water to come up with the, new, the, suite, the suite of new signage that's been planned. Eddie Jacobine, the group's chairman, said we believe by collaborating with Scottish Water that the best outcomes would be achieved. The next few months will see a bit of disruption, but these works will enhance the experience of all visitors to this wonderful asset. MSP slams Tory budget policies. West Scotland MSP Katie Clark has described Tory plans for further austerity as morally indefensible as she pledges to fight it. Last week, the Chancellor announced tax rises and real-term spending cuts of tens of billions. The Scottish Labour MSP said this will have a devastating effect on West Scotland councils, which have already suffered from years of cuts to public services and council budgets. She also described the decision of Scottish Tory MPs, including leader Douglas Ross, to vote in favour of the budget as appalling. Katie said, Several constituents have gotten in touch to express their alarm at the latest announcements, which will see the Scottish Government's budget cut in real terms, public services decimated even further, support for energy bills slashed, and ordinary people paying more in taxes over the next five years. District News, Churches Kirk and Tullow's Church of God At Regent Hall, Regent Street, there will be a friendship tea meeting this Sunday at 4pm. The speaker will be Andrew McElry. Refreshments will be served after the service. A warm welcome to everyone who is able to join us. 
Come to Coffee Corner on Wednesday from 12 noon to 2pm for home baking and coffee. Join our friends and neighbours for a chat over a coffee. For up-to-date and further information on our services, visit our website on www.regenthall.org. The Bible says, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an, at- as a- an atoning sacrifice for, all- for our sins. 1 John 4, verse 10 St James, Hilton Road, Bishop Briggs, Rector the Reverend Paul Watson, 0141 230-4080 There is a communion service on Thursday at 11am and on Sunday, December the 4th at 9am and 10.30am. Everyone is welcome to come along to any of these services. Face marks a personal choice. Do stay on for tea or coffee and fellowship afterwards. On Sunday, December the 4th, from 3pm to 4pm, there is a session of Crafty Kids in the Church Hall. All families are very welcome to come along and enjoy activities together. Big Sing Sunday, December the 4th, 7pm. Join the Wild Goose Music Group for an evening of singing together songs of Advent, hope, meaning and faith to traditional and contemporary tunes. Do come along and stay in for, for mince pies and tea or coffee afterwards. The Meditation Labyrinth is still available in the car park for a mindful walk around. There are also other virtual services and groups. For up-to-date and further information, refer to our social media, Facebook, St James LS Bishop Briggs, website, www.stjamesbishopbriggs.org.uk St David's Memorial Park Our morning service on December the 4th will be at our usual time of 10.30am and will be led by our Church of Scotland reader, John Nicholson. During our morning worship, School age children will have the opportunity to go through to our halls for their own time of fun and learning with JAM. All are welcome to attend their service. There are some COVID measures still in place, however, the wearing of face masks is not mandatory at this time. We look forward to welcoming you to the church. Over the course of this weekend, from December the 2nd until December the 4th, you are warmly welcome to come to our Christmas Connections and experience our walkthrough event from Narnia to Nazareth. Times are detailed on our Facebook page. Also, there is an opportunity to attend a Christmas market at the church with lots of stalls selling various goods. This takes place on Saturday, December the 3rd. On Sunday evening, December the 4th, at 7.30pm, Concordia Choir will be performing in our church. Our Tuesday lunchtime service will be held each Tuesday from 12 noon in our small hall. Our next service will be Tuesday, December the 6th. All are welcome to attend this afternoon service. Our Friendship Club will be meeting on the same day, from 1.30pm to 3.30pm. We would like to extend a warm invitation. Also, the church has commenced with a warm space on Monday, November the 21st. This will continue on Mondays. Volunteers are needed to support this event. If you can offer some time and support, please contact the church through the Facebook page. Home Church, Scotland Lammermoor Road, Kirkintilloch, G66, 4JP Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Colossians 3, verse 16 One church, home church, four locations, Kirkintilloch, Glasgow, Stornoway and online. A church for all ages. Warm space, warm meal, warm welcome at home church every Saturday at 6.30pm. Suggested donation £1.50 per adult, children eat free. Saturday, December the 3rd, Home Church will be singing Christmas carols in Kirkintilloch at 1pm. Sunday, December the 4th, 9.30am, prayer and worship. 10am, prayer meeting. 10.30am, fellowship, tea and coffee. 11am, worship service and communion followed by tea and coffee. The Sunday evening service is in Renfield Centre, Bath Street, Glasgow at 7pm. Mini bus leaves home church at 6.30pm. Wednesday at 7.15pm is a fellowship night, including a time of prayer and Bible study. Bible study in Glasgow at Renfield Centre on Wednesdays at 7.15pm. Youth meet on Fridays at 7.30pm for Youth Alpha and Fellowship. See Facebook and Instagram for up-to-date information. Colton Well Park Church a warm welcome to our service this morning at 11am, 
and Lane Penn Reffling Blessed Grieve. Tea and coffee served in the hall after service. The Colton Art Club continues this Monday starting at 10am to 1pm. New members invited and, if interested, contact 07709-584-680. Our pre-Christmas art sale and coffee morning is on Saturday, December the 3rd from 11am to 2pm, free admission. Cake and Company is on this Wednesday from 11am to 12 noon. Come along for a chat and a in good company. The Brownies meet every Wednesday from 6.30pm till 8pm and all girls aged from 7 to 10 years welcome. Company and senior sections for the Boys Brigade are on every Friday at 7pm. The food bank is open every Friday to 11am to 1pm and 2pm to 4pm. And thanks again to the many who contribute to their, this worthwhile cause. Follow our church services on Facebook at Colston Well Park Parish Church And if you require further information on any of our church activities, contact Leslie Grieve on 07813 255 053. Kenmuir Parish Church. We operate a warm welcome hub each Friday from noon until 3pm, which is open to all. This will provide a warm space with soup, tea and a chat that is free to all. In these difficult times, some folks could possibly do with some heat, food and company. So please think of any vulnerable neighbours, etc. you may know, and bring them along on Fridays. We will be hosting a St Andrew's Night celebration from 7pm to 8pm, a family event as we explore the life of our patron saint, with live music and refreshments. Our guild is holding a coffee morning on Saturday from 10am to 10 a.m. till noon. Come and support the guild and their efforts. Cheryl Wood and Fiona Young will lead our second Sunday and Advent morning service, beginning at 11am. In the afternoon, Reverend Anderson will hold a short, quiet service in which you reflect on, on loss in recent times. This is not merely aimed at the bereaved, as we will all reflect on lo- losses of all kind. Service led by Susan Anderson. Please feel free, feel free to invite friends or neighbours to whom you feel could derive comfort from this service. The wearing of masks will leave to personal choice throughout the sanctuary. The service will be live streamed on YouTube and can be found by searching for Kim Muir Bishop Briggs. Details of all of our groups that are currently running may be found on our website kimmuir-church.co.uk To find us on Facebook, just search for Kim Muir Parish Church. If you would like to join our WhatsApp group or receive the Bible studies from ABC, then email us at kimmuirchurch at icloud.com St Columbus Hillhead St Columbus Hillhead Church has two sites, St Columbus and Hillhead. Do join us for our Sunday morning service at St Columbus at 10am or at Hillhead at 11.30am. Tea, coffee and juice are served after the service at St Columbus and before the service at Hillhead. We'd love to meet you there, but if you really can't come in person, you can still connect with us by live stream via www.kirkintelloughstcolumbus.org.uk or by searching for St Columbus Hillhead Kirkintelloughstcolumbus.org.uk on YouTube, we have a shorter midweek service at St Columbus on Wednesdays at 10am. We are offering free hot drinks and biscuits at our new weekly warm welcome events, 2pm to 4pm at Hillhead on Wednesday afternoons, and 10am to noon at St Columbus Halls on Thursdays. Come for a chat, or to the pa- read the paper, or to make use of our free Wi-Fi, St Columbus only. Cater Parish Church. For full details, see our website. We look forward to welcoming you this coming Sunday to our morning service, which is at 10.30am. This will be our second Sunday in Advent service. The service will be led by Reverend Joy McGregor, Ronan Gold and Ho- Jose Javi Isendo Mao, MMUS. Children, Cather Kids, meet in the church prior to the service and then go up to Cather North Hall for their activities. Early Fellowship meets in the South Hall Chapel at 9.30am on Thursday for half an hour with Reverend John McGregor and also available on Tuesday and Thursday in Zoom. For further details, contact the Minister. Cadder Coffee Shop at Cadder South Hall in Kirkintilloch Road is open on Tuesday to Thursday from 10am to 2pm and also on Friday from 10am to noon. Come along and enjoy good food and great fellowship. Jacqueline, our manager, and her team look forward to giving you a warm welcome. Tickets for the Christmas film night on Friday December the 2nd, are now on sale. The film is Nativity and tickets are priced £5 
and are available for members of the Fellowship team. Cat or Kids Christmas Party, December the 3rd, Geese Your Service, December the 4th at 2pm. This time of year can be very busy, so in the midst of our busyness, it's good to make space to reflect and give thanks for others, especially our loved ones, who are no longer with us. Our Grecia service will be reflective. There will be a tree on which we can place the name of a loved one as a symbol of of our affection and love as we remember them and give thanks for their lives and so take comfort that they are now in the fullness of God's love. All are welcome. Advent Reflections, Worship and Fellowship, December the 4th and 11th, South Hall, 7pm. This is an opportunity to come together and spend time reflecting, worshipping and having fellowship as we prepare our hearts for Christmas. Everyone is welcome. Gift, Christmas gift service, December 11th. We are supporting Eastern Bartonshire Women's Aid. Cater Kids Nativity, December the 18th. Church, 10.30am. Cater Singers. The Cater Singers. Christmas sing along this year will be on December the 18th at 7pm in the church. It will be an evening of traditional Christmas songs and carols as well as some new ones. There will be poems and stories in between the songs, so please come along and share the joy with us all, in person at last. You will even get a cup of tea and a mince pie. It should be wonderful. It be a wonderful start to the week before Christmas. Welcome to Olenzi Old Parish. Sunday worship is at 11am. Sunday school for children aged 3 years to primary 7 and focus for young people. A creation is available for children under 3. Saturday December the 3rd at 5pm, Lindsay Christmas light switch on. Gather around Lindsay Old. old. Refreshments served in the church hall afterwards. Time out on Monday December the 5th at 7.45pm. In the church hall, we'll be creating Christmas craft and decorations. Come and sing, the Dementia Friendly Singing Group meets on Tuesday the 6th of December at 1.15pm to 2.45pm in the Church Hall. A warm welcome awaits all, and of course a cuppa with some delicious home baking. Please feel free to come and sing. Springfield Cambridge Church Morning worship on Sunday December the 4th will be led by Rev. Ian Taylor, Rev. Edson Duque de Castro and Mrs. Julie Harty in the sanctuary at 11am. The Sunday School meets in room 2. There is also a creche facility where we will be happy to look after your child, birth to 3 years. This is our gift service when Tesco gift cards or cash donations will be gratefully received with support to support St Rollins' work with refugees and asylum seekers. Morning Worship has also been live streamed on the Springfield Cambridge Church YouTube channel. A link to this can be found on the Springfield Cambridge Church website www.springfieldcambridge.org.uk and Facebook page where up-to-date information about events and church organisations can also be found. Tea and coffee are available after the service in the Cameron Hall. Come along and enjoy the fellowship. There will be a vestry hour on Wednesday, November the 30th from 10am to 11am for anyone who wishes to speak with the minister. There will be a short weekly service of worship in the Springfield Chapel on Wednesday, November the 30th from 11.10am to 11.30am, with refreshments afterwards in the Hall of Fellowship. The City of Glasgow Wind Orchestra are having their Christmas concert in the church on Friday December the 9th at 7.30pm. Join us for a fabulous evening of cheery music, witty banter and light refreshments. Pay at the door. Eastern Bartonshire Strings Orchestra are holding their Christmas concert in the church Sunday December the 11th at 6pm. Local school pupils and staff return to us in the Christmas mood. The concert is followed by tea slash coffee and mince pies. St Mary's Parish Church. The service on Sunday December the 4th will begin at 11am as usual and will be taken by the Reverend Dr Ruth Morrison. On Saturday December the 3rd at 2.30pm the Kirk and Tullough Male Voice Choir are singing a selection of Christmas music in the church. Tickets cost £6.00 primary age children free, available from any choir member 0141 775 2437. The monthly open doors will take place on Wednesday December the 7th. The church will be open from 10am to 3.30pm. Tea and coffee will be available all day 
and between 12 and 15 p.m. and 1 p.m. sandwiches will also be available. Christmas music will be played from 12.15 to 12.45 p.m. on both the organ and piano. All are welcome. On every Wednesday morning between 9 a.m. and noon, the session house will be open as part of the warm welcome scheme. A hot drink and home baking will be available as well as a warm welcome. The annual gift service will take place on Sunday, December 11th, as will the Advent lunch after the service. Milton of Campsey Church. We are back in the building, no need to book. If you sit in the centre aisle, there is no need to wear a mask. If you sit in the side aisles, please wear one. On Wednesday at 6pm, there is a fish and film night showing It's a Wonderful Life. Tickets available at the church. Time to pray is 7.15pm. It's in the Eric Liddell. Three house groups are meeting this week on the Josiah Spears. Monday at 7pm, Wednesday at 2pm and Thursday at 7pm. Phone Phyllis for more details or just come along. Our Warm Species Hub is now up and running on Wednesdays and Thursdays in the afternoon at 1pm. To volunteer and or for more information, contact Anne Pert, Anne Pert 56 at gmail.com or 01360-313-003. BB Anchor and Junior Sections meet on Friday at 6.15pm. Next Sunday is the second Sunday in Advent when the peace candle will be lit. For our montage, send us a video of yourself saying peace be with you in BSL. At 2pm on Sunday, when Christmas hurts, a reflective surface for all those who have known grief, pain, disappointment and worry in 2022 or any other time. Our Christmas messenger has been put through every door in the village. If you'd like a copy, phone Phyllis on 07582 713 463 District News General Date Wednesday the 30th of November 2022 Family Action Fund Supporting families this winter, Family Action launches the Family Action Fund to provide at least £500,000 in £200 grants to 2,500 vulnerable families as a response to the cost of living crisis. The Family Action Fund is a new grants programme launched to provide a lifeline for families who are struggling with food insecurity. The £200 grant to be dispersed through Family Action Services or partner organisations will be made up of food vouchers and to be redeemed at Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda and Morrison's. The families in receipt of the grants will be able to spend them either in bulk or as a supplement to the regular food shops. David Holmes, CBE, Chief Executive of Family Action, said, Due to the rising energy prices and soaring inflation, we are seeing a huge increase in families needing support with the absolute basics, like food and hygiene products. People who were just about managing at the start of the year are now finding they can no longer meet, make ends meet and they have been pushed over the edge into poverty. This has become the reality for many of the families of Family Action Works with and we need to provide an urgent response to this crisis. With the new Family Action Fund, we are pleased that in a short amount of time we will be able to help thousands of families who otherwise would be making the choice of between heating and eating. Family Action has a well-established and proven grant grant giving function for families in need of help with basic essentials and has distributed grants for more than for much of its 150 year history. Now working with the charity's frontline teams and established partner organisations including refugees, housing associations and other trusted charitable groups, Family Action is once again looking to help thousands of vulnerable families who are facing a financial crisis. If you would like to support the Family Action Fund Winter Crisis Appeal please visit www.familyaction.org.uk slash what we do slash grants slash family action fund. If you are in need of support, visit the Family Action website for more information or call the Family Line Helpline 24-7 for free on 0808 802 6666 or text 07537 404 282. Special Christmas Cards Charity Cere- Cerebral Palsy Scotland has released Christmas, a Christmas card featuring disabled people in response to the lack of inclusive cards on the market. 
The card design features a Christmas scene that includes a wheelchair user and a person using a walking frame. Cerebral palsy, CP, is a lifelong condition that affects a person's ability to control their movement, posture and balance. One in three people with cerebral palsy are not able to walk and use wheelchairs or walking frames to support their mobility. Head of Fundraising and Communications, Isla Camdell Upton said, One in 500 births results in a diagnosis of cerebral palsy. That means every year 150 babies born in Scotland will continue to live with this condition into adulthood. We want to ensure that the cerebral palsy community are included and represented. The images we see around us really influence our opinion on a whole range of things, including disability. It's disappointing that there aren't more Christmas cards featuring disabled people available in the market. We hope our card makes a small difference to raising awareness and conveys a message that people with cerebral palsy who use mobility aids are a positive part of human diversity. Marion Burns has cerebral palsy and lives in Renfrewshire. Commenting on the card, she says, As someone with cerebral palsy, I was really pleased to see something different on the Christmas card, a card with disabled people on it. Also, it was good to see people with disabilities included in this card, like people using a wheelchair and walk in a walking frame. I like the way these people are in the picture and they are mixed in with everyone else, giving you the feeling that everyone is the same and they're all enjoying being on, out in the snow. I think it is important for the general public to see people with cerebral palsy represented in this card and included in Christmas scenes. I like the way it is not looking at a picture with disabled people. I also hope that Cerebral Palsy Scotland Christmas card will make people think about the subject of inclusivity. This Christmas card can be purchased at www.cerebral-palsy-scotland.myshopify.com Keep dogs on a lead. During the rutting season this autumn, pet charity Blue Cross warns pet owners about taking their de- dogs to areas where there are wild deer. While stags and bucks battle to preserve their harems, female deer are in season for just a few hours over the period and dogs are people coming between a male and female deer in season are in serious danger of being injured. Heart of the Matter Value of Life Enhancing Friendships by Dr Frank Dunn Why is full in enhancing relationships? We all have friends who would do anything for you. I lost one such friend recently in Lane Through. Helen and I first met Lane and Irene almost 40 years ago through their daughter Dawn, who loved to take her little ones out for a walk. We were neighbours and clicked from the starts. Lane and Irene supported us superbly through happy and sad times. Lane and I golfed and shared an interest in football. Lane was a hugely talented footballer as a schoolboy. A bad leg break at the age of 18 only temporarily stalled what was to become a most impressive career. He played senior football for three years and would frequently regale me with tales of jousts with such stars as Jim, John Craig and Jimmy Johnson. Lane had played against Jimmy Johnson from his days as a schoolboy. They were in opposition again for a friendly game just before the Celtic, Celtic's second European Cup final appearance. Jimmy zipped past Lane several times in the first half, before Lane informed him that if he did that once more, he would end up in row Z of the stand. At half time, Jock Steening indicated that unless Lane was substituted, Celtic would not appear for the second half. Lane's footballing skills may have arisen partly from his grandfather, who was a legendary footballer with Celtic. Peter Johnson played 233 times for Celtic in the three positions that Lane also played in. They both had an exceptional left foot. Peter Johnson died as he had lived, a hero sacrificing his life for his country during World War I, aged 29. Lane was a stalwart for a number of junior teams, including Kirk and Tullock Rob Roy. He captained Rob Roy to the final of the Cup. He was a natural leader and very competitive. I remember him saying to me on one occasion, They are older than us. Walk fast and tire them out. Lane had a natural and engaging way with people, which was a great asset in his considerable talent and sales. He found his home working for High Cross in the development and sale of garage forecourts. He was a kind and generous, generous man who was hugely popular in many circles. His family showed great devotion to him in his final illness. Their loss is the greatest. His passing also leaves a large gap in my life and that of many others. Maxi Departs, an article written by Brian Yule and read by me, Corey. 
Kirk and Tillock Rob Roy returned to action on Saturday at home to Troon, but were without Stuart Maxwell in the dugout after he agreed to take over as manager at WOS Premier League rivals Pollock. The 46-year-old took charge of Rob Roy in 2014 and in his first season won promotion to the SJFA West Premier Division, ironically alongside champions Pollock. Since then, Rob Roy have been ever-present in the top flight and in the 2016-17 campaign won the Central Sectional League Cup. Maxwell will be joined at Pollock by his assistant, Chris McFadgen. A statement from Rob Roy said, We would like to thank Stuart for his outstanding contribution to Rob Roy in his near 10-year spell as manager. What he has achieved has been remarkable considering the club's circumstances, and we will be forever grateful. We wish both Stuart and Chris all success. Graham Mullen was named interim manager for the visit of Troon, with Rob Roy winning 2-0. Troon had the ball in the net, but it was disallowed for offside before Connor Hughes opened the scoring for the home side after 26 minutes. Jamie Barclay made it 2-0 in the 77th minute with a neat lob over Dale Burgess. Two minutes from time, Troon were awarded a penalty, only to see the decision reversed and Josh Black shown a yellow card for diving. They would then finish the game with nine men as Mark Morrison was shown a straight red card. Mullen praised the way the players handled the event of the past weekend and their performance against Troon. He told the Kirk and Rob Roy YouTube channel, the boys handled the news impeccably and didn't have a failure on Saturday. They've been unbelievable worked extremely hard and deserved the three points. Rob Roy are away to Peters Hill on Saturday, who lost 2-1 at home to Hurlford on Saturday. The hosts took the lead after 36 minutes, with Craig Quinn firing home from close range after a stramash. However, the visitors hit back in the second half with a Jack Whitaker double earning the three points. That is from the Kirk and Tillich Herald and written by Brian Yule and read by me, Corey. Rossville women stay second. Rossville women remain second in the Scottish Women's Championship with a 3-2 win over Inverness, Caledonian Thistle in the Highlands. The home side opened the scoring through Kayleigh McKenzie, but Rossville Morgan Anderson bagged a brace alongside a goal from Lucy McJacobs to put in front. Inverness fought back with a goal from Alex Andrews and had opportunities towards the end to grab an equaliser, but Rossville held on. Rossville remains six points behind leaders Livingston and will next be in action on December 8th against third place Renfrew. The Rossville men lost 7-2 away to Colburnie Leadside in the WOS First Division, while Rossville Academy were beaten for one at home to Harmony Row in the Fourth Division. Rossville, who have signed Connor McLaughlin, are at home to Drum Chapel on Friday night, while Academy are away to Thieves Rovers on Saturday. However, there was a more positive result in the 4th Division for West Park United, as they won 2-0 away to Glenvale with goals from Stefan Graham and Dylan Kennedy. West Park have signed Matthew Stewart from Ashfield, but his own club's match away to Glasgow United in the 2nd Division was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. West Park are at home to Campbelltown pupils, and Ashfield host Yoker on Saturday. Glasgow Persher lost 1-0 at home to 4th Wanderers in the 2nd Division when the referee decided Stephen Frame's effort had crossed the line. Persher are away to Maryhill on Saturday. Lindsay 2016s receive new kit from sponsors. 
The boys of Lindsay's Youth Club 2016s have received a new kit following sponsorship from the SWG Plumbing Solutions and Real Systems Alliance Scotland. The side are in their second year of playing in the EDSSA Fun Fours that takes place at Kirkintal High on Saturday morning. There are currently 20 boys involved in the squad, and while the object of the games is on fun, so results are not really kept track of, it has been noted that they have improved massively since the side started. The players are all primary two pupils from Lindsay and Kirkintilloch area, and for some it is a family affair as they are coached by some of the parents of the boys. James Black, who helps run the team, said, Lindsay Youth Club 2016s would like to thank our sponsors, Scott Johnson from SWG Plumbing Solutions and Real Systems Alliance Scotland. The boys are delighted with their new strips, jackets and training tops. Santa Dash taking place for Food Bank. An article written by Brian Yule and read by me, Corey. Walk, Run, Cycle in and around Eastern Bartonshire is hosting its first Santa Dash next month in aid of Eastern Bartonshire Food Bank. The events take place on Saturday, December 10th, with warm-up and pre-activities starting at 10.30am from Kirkintilloch Marina, just outside Laird's Land Primary, and the dash itself due to begin at 11am. You can choose to walk, run or wheel the short 2 kilometer distance, which will continue along Christine's Way and into Boghead Wood to the finish line. Suggested donation is £2 per person or £5 for a family. Register through the Walk, Run, Cycle in and around Eastern Bartonshire Facebook page, checking the events page for more details. Group founder Lorna Thompson said, Walk, run, cycle in and around Eastern Bartonshire look forward to starting the Christmas season off with a bang and by doing good for the vulnerable in the area to during the current cost of living crisis. Santa hats will be provided but please feel free to dress as Christmassy as you wish. Dollies are welcome but need to be kept on elite. Santa will make an appearance at the finish line to hand out selection boxes to the kids with a sweet treat provided for the adults too. There will be an opportunity on the day to send your letters to Santa too, so make sure the little ones have written them. Remember you are all responsible for your and your family's safety on all meet-up events. By joining you have agreed to search for their disclaimer in the file section of the page and read it. The food bank is currently busy getting ready for festive season, having been given more storage space by Eastern Bartonshire Council. Its letter to Santa requests the following. Tinned custard, Christmas pudding, tinned ham, luxury biscuits, shortbread, boxes of chocolates, selection boxes, mince pies, savoury snacks, Christmas cake and Yule log. A spokesperson said, We need to be organised well in advance for our incomparable volunteers to sort and allocate the generous donations from our community. In order to ensure we can use your Christmas donations at Christmas, and not the third week in January, we are asking you all to please get donations to us by December 2nd. That article written by Brian Yule and read by me, Corey. Thank you for listening to this week's Kirk and Tiller Herald podcast. Brought to you by Cued Review, print speaking to the blind. If you've any feedback, you're welcome to call us on 0141 772 3976. If you enjoyed this recording, feel free to subscribe to our channel.